At several points during the uh, argument and rebuttal, the mutability of these statuses, race and class, has been talked about, and the immutability of them. Does race and ethnicity end up being not as mutable as class and able to confer disadvantage in a different way over a broader chunk of a person's life? Professor Connolly? I think that depends on what outcome you're talking about. There's certainly plenty of evidence that uh, stereotypes, there's been actual experimentation about stereotype threat, that if you prime white or black students or Asian students uh, with the the, the stereotypes about test performance and academic achievement, before they take a test, you can drive down black scores and, and uh, drive up white and Asian scores, for example. Or if you juxtapose whites against Asians, you drive whites down and Asians up. The stereotypes matter. There's other evidence that there is discrimination out there in the world. No one's arguing that there, there's not. Uh, but the, the, I, I'm a pragmatist, and I think that the passions around this issue, the, the plebiscites across the nation, by state by state, suggest that we need to try something new. Uh, maybe, not, maybe in 25 years, maybe now, maybe in 50 years. But we need to try something new. Uh, we need to get rid of the legacy admissions policy at Columbia. I would challenge uh, uh, Lee to, to do that, but the donors won't like it. Uh, we need to get rid of uh, a, the, you know, a lot of these policies that, don't, that unlevel the playing field. But, but you're a sociologist. Isn't class, and part of the way we understand class, a set of learned behaviors, gestures, social norms that one can learn and transfer from one class to another while race follows you around and has an impact on your life that's just different? Again, that's a failure. Of, that race does that now. But what if we had a different... American society where there were no huge class differences by race, then slowly, for, certainly for sure, race would become more like ethnicity. It would be more like the difference between being Polish and Italian. Um, it would be a cultural heritage. It would be something we want to preserve, something that's important to people themselves, but it would not determine your life chances, and that's ultimately what we're talking about. Answer him. Well, I find what Dalton says, you know, I find the spirit in which he says it very appealing. Uh, that is, if you could eliminate wealth differences or reduce them significantly, that would lead to elimination of perceived and felt differences based on race generally in the society. Um, I think I, I, my own personal feeling is that that just would not happen. Uh, but it wouldn't happen in 25 years. What Sandra Day O'Connor said in the, in the Michigan cases was very unusual to have uh, a kind of time limit put on a constitutional decision. I think underlying that was her wish that in 25 years uh, there would be no felt need to have any kind of efforts on integration because uh, all the uh, sense of difference would, would have vanished, meaningful difference. And uh, I think that's naive uh, as well. I just want to say one thing, though. You know, we just need to focus not only on race and ethnicity in admissions, but all the other things that are taken into account. So if one wants to criticize universities for social engineering, then let's also talk about geographic diversity. From the very early part of this country, there was a sense that universities and colleges could play a role of bringing citizens from all different parts of the country together to create a more unified uh, democratic polity. Uh, that is something we all, I think, accept as extremely important. I would say the same is true with respect to integration and race since Brown.